In my previous video, I talked about how we migrated our web-based point of sales app into an installable Electron-based app and how it helped improve the experience for our merchants. When we made the move to Electron, I had to make the decision which database technology we wanted to use. I'm a big fan of Prisma and I thought to myself, can we not simply ship Prisma with Electron? Turns out you can, but let me tell you why it wasn't the best idea. Prisma is an ORM that is able to generate a type safe client tailored to your specific database schema. The way this works is pretty clever. You define a database schema in a schema.prisma file, and then using a CLI, you can generate a client that is tailored to that specific schema. Importing this tailored client into your code provides a lot of context to your IDE so you can benefit from powerful autocomplete functions. For example, let's say you have a users table and you want to find a specific user based on their email address. Your IDE is able to give you hints what type the email column is in your database. Prisma also has the capabilities to handle migrations for you. So whenever you evolve your schema, you can generate a migration file that you can later apply to your database. Under the hood, Prisma uses a thing called engines that are written in Rust. These engines expose a low level interface for interacting with native APIs. Lucky for us, we don't have to compile these engines ourselves because Prisma provides them pre-compiled for every major operating system. Now, in a normal situation, Prisma runs on a server. For example, in an authentication service. Because we wanted to power our Electron app that was offline based using Prisma, we had to figure out how we can ship two major engines to the client. We had a query engine that was responsible for handling the queries. And we had a migration engine that, as you might have guessed it, would handle the migrations. Both of these engines, however, had a massive footprint of over 30 megabytes each, which meant we were adding a whopping 60 megabytes to our final binary. Electron is not exactly known for their lean app size, so adding an additional 60 megabytes really has an impact. On top of that, Prisma needs the Microsoft Visual C++ runtime components to be installed. Our point of sales hardware came with Windows but did not have these components installed. So we had to modify our installer and we had to include a check whether or not these additional components had to be installed, adding additional complexity and more friction in the installation process. Now, our merchants aren't exactly known for their tech savviness and they usually bought an internet subscription from a lower tier ISP. Long story short, download speeds were a disaster so pushing 150 megabytes over the wire was not ideal. Finally, I do my development on a Mac, but because Prisma required operating system specific bindings, we had to set up a GitHub action that ran on Windows, which came with its own quirks and challenges. Once we figured out how we could ship these specific engines to the client, we achieved a milestone. Prisma was working inside our Electron app. The next challenge was figuring out how we could evolve our schema in the field. Because with every update we were planning to introduce new features and some of these features required changes to the database. In a normal situation you'd run something like npx prisma migrate deploy. But since we were operating in an Electron context, we had to do things a bit differently. On every app startup, we had to do a sequence of steps. We had to find the location of the Prisma client, we had to find the location of the query and the migration engine and the schema. This all lived inside the app executable. We then had to fork a new node process, passing in the necessary environment variables. And finally, this forked process could run Prisma migrate deploy and we could pass in our schema. This was quite a hassle to set up, but once it was working, it kind of did its job well. On every app startup, this command was executed and the database was brought up to date. A thing we had to keep in mind was that the user did not necessarily install every update. A user could be on version 1.0 and could jump to 1.5, skipping every version in between. This adds an extra challenge when working with migrations, because you don't want to end up in a situation where the migration fails on app startup. This would render the application unusable until a manual intervention happens. We now had an app that shipped Prisma and was able to do queries and migrations. And even though this worked, the impact on the app startup speed was a disaster. Once the application was booted up, however, the runtime speed wasn't affected too badly by Prisma. Now, we ran the setup a little over one year in production before we made the decision to sunset it and migrate everything to IndexedDB. If you're considering shipping Prisma with Electron, I would highly advise you to reconsider, no matter how tempting it is. Instead, take a look at alternatives like RxDB, for example. The downsides of shipping Prisma 
inside Electron greatly outweighed the upsides and ultimately slowed down our development. As we spent too much time fighting against this setup instead of building new features for our customers. So please learn from my mistakes and I will see you in the next video.